Okay, so for today's video, I'm going to make another Batman cowl. I know I've done three videos on this. Uh, of course, most recent was the Gotham by Gaslight Batman cowl. And it's chilling back there behind the Stormtrooper, First Order Stormtrooper. And for today, I made another BVS uh, slash Dark Knight Return style cowl. Unlike the other one, though, I, the other one I just used a Dawn of Justice, or not a, yeah, BVS Dawn of Justice, Ruby's Mask for the face. And this one I actually have a pattern. So that you can get the full facial features and all that good stuff. The flares in the nostril and the crow's feet around the eyes and the brow and all that good stuff in the pattern. And, of course, it'll be up on Facebook for free. So if you're good with scaling things and, and such, you can always download that and just print it off. I also made a neck piece, neck and shoulder piece in this video that accompanies it. There is not patterns for that. Each one have to be built specifically a little bit too specifically to your own dimensions in order to fit you right so I didn't want to put up some generic pattern but I do explain how I made it and it's pretty simple just the measurements of your neck front as far as you want it to go rear as far as you want it to go side to side cut it out but uh, I'll get into all that and the siliconing process and all the craziness I had to go through to get these tendons and muscles and stuff to look like tendons and muscles and stuff so yeah and if you want cardstock patterns of the cowl here, those will be up on Etsy for you to purchase if you'd like. And I'll also put a link in the description to another video I did on a separate similar neck piece that doesn't actually have all the shoulders to give you an idea of how I do that. And yeah, let's go First ahead and go just ahead and start video. tracing out and cutting out all my pieces uh, from the pattern that I came up with. And what this is here is the face. And you can see it has a rather ridiculous uh, amount of detail and such in it. And I usually don't do this, but this is something that makes tracing patterns on the foam a little more simple, is sticking some little push pins into it. And those are relatively expensive, easy to get, common. You may already have them in your house. And also, when you cut the pieces out before you do a final glue, you can also use these to stick it together. Although, I never do that and just blaze ahead recklessly. So, that's not necessarily a good thing, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my push pins here. And see how this looks. Huh? Came out pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to get out of my light. <laughs> and... I'm going to go ahead and trace out the other pieces, which can be the side and the back piece, and go ahead and start cutting these out. So another quick tip, I usually end up cutting this off first. Makes it a little bit easier to cut. And the face piece here is being cut out of 3 millimeter craft foam. And all the rest of the pieces that are not the face are going to be on 5mm. That's the sides, the top, etc, etc. Okay, hopefully it doesn't seem like I skipped too far ahead too fast. But I went through and I used contact cement, bada bing, to glue all the V's together here on the side. All the way around the face shell here. And next, you'll notice I started to heat and curve in the facial shape. And the nice thing about this is most all the curves are the same. What I mean by that is I heat it with my heat gun, and then I curve it this way, okay? This top brow, uh, brow piece, the lower brow piece, uh, the center here as well is also curved, okay? Try to get this all completely in frame so you guys can get a look at it. Also heat it a little bit on the inside here to push out the cheek. The cheekbones here on the side you'll notice that the cheekbone pretty much lines up with this v here and that's part of the reason why i put that cut where i put the cut so i'll have a frame of reference and next i'm going to start gluing all these together and i'm going to start i'm going to glue one side or maybe just both sides bit by bit and show you i'm going to work from the bottom and i'm going to go all the way up to the top on this piece also want to point out here i've cut out my nose piece and same thing put curves into it here and a little bit of etching just for the line for the nasal, sorry, the nostril on both sides. And see it from the bottom as well. I also glued that V together to give you a nice bat fleck nose shape. Now these eyelid pieces, I know I said I was going to cut all the facial features out of 3mm foam. Just 
in the last couple clips, but after cutting it in the EVA foam out of 3mm, I didn't like the angle that I got when I heated it and tweaked it, so I ended up using 2mm foam, which is also why I, I, I have gray 2mm, but I wanted to make sure you saw this was different, so I did use white 2mm foam just to show you the difference. I'm going to start gluing all this stuff up here together. Okay, so before I go on and glue the other side, I want to point out, you'll see here the edge of this piece is glued onto the top of this piece. This inner edge is where I applied the contact cement. And then on this other piece, on the top side here, and kind of unnaturally joined them together, if that makes sense. That we have this nice pronounced angle between the brow and the eyelid. And just by gluing it together, you can see it's giving it a nice curved shape. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that on the other side so that they both match. Then I'm going to start to glue this piece to this piece. Alright, I've glued these two together here, these two pieces. These pretty much just went edge to edge. And just to make sure they hold on the back side of them, I used super glue. But this super glue happens to have a brush in it. So I can just apply a little bit just on the back side of the seam here. Wow, this day just looks really hideously goofy. Now anyways, the next things I did was glued on the eyelid pieces and I glued together the little cutout V's here on the corner of the eye which will later be heated and I'll probably use a paintbrush handle or something to push on the back side here, heat the back side and use the paintbrush handle to push to give some definition of like eye wrinkles through here. Let me show you the back too, see how I glued it on. And next just going to be matching this up and looking at this, see how this is going to fit. And next thing I'm probably going to do is the brows here, followed by the nose. Alright, so next I have glued on this piece here and attached both of these. And you'll notice I didn't glue this side yet, just because I wanted to show you exactly, I want to point out exactly what I did. I matched these two seams up on the inside edge here and the inside edge here. But once I get to about this point here, it's not going to be glued lining up. It's going to be glued overlapping on this part here. If that makes sense, I'm going to go ahead and glue this other side, and I'll move on to the nose. So before I go through and glue on, uh, glue on, glue on the nose piece here, I went through and did some serious heat shaping and heat forming to get this to look like I needed to look. And also the heating helped to make the 3mm foam a little bit more stiff, so now it's holding its shape better. Anytime you use a heat gun, it will cause the pores in the foam to shrink, and essentially you're making it stiffer, but you're also shrinking it somewhat at the same time. So keep that in mind anytime you're heat forming stuff with a heat gun. Unless of course you're an old pro, then I don't know why you're watching my channel. Unless you just like my patterns or you think I'm funny. Maybe you sit there and make fun of me. I don't know. But everything pretty much seems to be coming together. And from that horrific mess into what is now turning into the bat flag with a crooked nose. But yeah, so next I'm going to glue on the nose and heat form and shape that the rest of the way. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to start reinforcing the back of it before I glue this onto all the other pattern pieces or go any further. Alright, so the first part of gluing on the nose is for me to prep it. And all these cut lines here, I put contact cement in that and I glue these pieces back together so they're all a little tighter and a little closer. And also heat it a little more so you get these ridges. And also put a little bit more heat on the nostril areas and rounded and pulled them out a little bit more. I'm going to work on it a little bit more. I think this side needs to be a little bit more consistent with this one. But it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the shape of the nose and everything the way I like it. And then I shall glue it on. Okay, now the second part here, of course, is to just glue it on. And what I did was I applied contact cement once again. And I started with the top here. And being careful to keep this side away from this side, although you could attach the top and have one side coated in contact cement, apply that, apply your contact cement to the other side and keep them separate and then put the other side together. But I just contact cemented the whole entire thing at once essentially. Started with the top, worked my way down, then worked my way down to the side. Now, the way this pattern is cut, it almost looked like it didn't want to fit together, but when I forced it together, it helped pull in a lot of this definition so on and so forth here. 
and since then I've used some heat as you can see to give the nose some more shape or the beak or whatever you want to call that bad nose and then also did a little bit more work on the eyes here so I need to do a little bit more work on this one and I also heated the underside here where the brows come out and just use my finger to pull out this definition here in the brow and in the side so it has a nice profile now and yeah it's starting to shape up I still have a few more things to heat and do uh, I still have to heat and do some stuff on the brows and through here and also want to heat and put some ridges coming in between the cut lines here that I glued together but yeah yeah a lot of little tedious heat and shape and heat and shape on this but I think it's you know looking pretty good so far I like it so yeah going to do some more heating and then I'm going to start reinforcing some of the stuff on the back side. All right so as far as all the reinforcing goes I simply cut some strips of some scrap two millimeter EVA foam and I've begun to glue them around the outside edge and gluing these I'm using super glue. It doesn't matter if you use Gorilla or what brand you use I just happen to be able to get this pretty cheap where I live and I'm gluing this in there just to help it hold its overall shape. Generally when I make masks, I don't use 3mm EVA foam for like the base shell. But since there was so much detail, and I knew I had to stretch and pull and heat and, you know, mold the foam to get all this shape into it, that I knew I wouldn't really be able to do it with 5mm. Maybe, but I just don't think I could have quite got quite this kind of detail. So, there's a detail. And to hold the detail, I am now gluing these strips in place. A few other things I'm going to do, I've already taken and just kind of rough cut out a piece that would fit in here. And you can see it's all shiny and glossy because I used my heat gun here to heat it up and stretch a little shape into it. And I'm going to use super glue and glue that into here to help hold the forehead in place. Alright, I've done some further reinforcing with just some random pieces that I've cut here. All the black, of course, is 2mm. Now this blue that you see here, that's 5mm. And you'll notice I have two layers of it that I added up here. That's just to keep it off my forehead. You may need to add layers. You may not need to add anything. It just depends on the shape of your head versus the shape of, you know, what this cowl here is. And I needed to add some. And these blue ones are 5mm. And that's just to reinforce this raised cheek area here. Especially since I'm going to have the chin come down with a Velcro strap underneath it. And that is going to make it tight to my chin but as it does that it may flex and pull a little bit I don't want it messing up that nice cheekbone area that I've really pushed into both sides the face shell for a minute here which I just have sitting off to the side now I'm gonna start assembling some of the side and back pieces and all these patterns of course in the pattern set there's this one and this one two of each uh, one one of each for the right and the left respectively okay and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take contact cement and I'm going to put that on these V's here and I'm going to glue all the V's together which will start to give it a rounded shape same thing with over here there's two one large one and one medium sized one apply contact cement to all those and then put them together okay so after gluing all the V's together I went ahead and glued these two center pieces together by placing them side by side on the table and matching the edges up and pressing it together making sure that these seams line up, the end here lines up and it also lines up there as well. And next what I'm going to be doing is gluing on the blue side to the blue and the red side to the red. However, I will not be putting any contact cement from here the contact cement will stop and here the contact cement will stop. There will be none on the ear area. You need the ear area unglued because we're gonna heat and shape and stretch this after it's all glued together. But yeah, definitely do not glue the ear to the side of this. All right, and with all four pieces glued together, of course I did not attach the ears here. So I have space to do things like stretch out and shape the ear from both the top and the bottom part here. And yeah, that's my, I like to think of and call my bat bonnet. Okay, by bat bonnet, I mean, you put this on without the face shell attached and it looks like a bonnet for Batman.
Now they are all glued together, I have this rather sketchy horror mover, horror, horror movie esque looking uh, mannequin head here, and I'm going to use that for is to help round this out. And just looking at the face section here and matching it up, it seemed a little bit small. However, part of the reason why it's smaller is I've heated it with a heat gun. When you heat things with a heat gun, they shrink. So. I'm going to start heating this up as well, which should also shrink, and hopefully they will match up. But that's one of the main problems, you know, at least in a theoretical sense, because I hadn't done this before. I never take, like, and use a 3mm piece for a mask and match it to a 5mm, uh, just because they are a little different. The density is a little different, the thickness is a little different, and how they shrink when you heat them is a little different. So I wanted to make sure they match, but, you know... Uh, I didn't want it. I was hoping it wouldn't shrink up too much. But I think once I heat this, it's going to be just fine. And to heat this up, I'm going to be using my Drill Master. It is a dual temperature heat gun. Have it on the high setting. It gets hot pretty quick. And all I basically do is heat up an area, not too large. It is around 4 inches by 4 inches or so where the main heat focuses. And I just use that to help heat it and round it out. You can see it's already a little bit more rounded as opposed to how pointy it is there. I'm going to keep doing that, pushing, stretching, heating, shrinking, etc. until all this is nice and worked out and rounded. If you watch my other videos, you've seen me do this before, so I don't want to go into it too deeply because there's not much to this. It's just rounding out and smoothing out the mask as much as possible. Now, if you're curious as to where I got this particular thing at, it was given to me. It was donated to me, like so much other stuff. Like this crappy flower pot it's sitting on, because it just isn't tall enough sitting on the table to apply proper pressure to the mask without smashing up and bending the bottom of it. So, yeah, that's why it's sitting on this flower pot. But where, as far as where you get these, I don't know. I don't even know what this is called. I know it's a mannequin head of some sort, but... I mean, it's so old, there's no manufacturer or manufacturing date. It has these sketchy old rusty staples in it and looks somewhat handmade. And it's definitely not perfect or completely symmetrical, but it is definitely cool and super useful. Okay, so I've smoothed out a lot of the angular uh, ness of, of, of these two sides that come together here. And also put a little bit more shape into everything else. Now on this side, I left it plain. But I did some stuff by hand that had nothing to do with this mannequin head. So you can see the contrast here. This side I heated and used the flat of my hand to raise up this whole area from up here on the tip of the ear down into here on the side. And also heated and smoothed out some of this area as well. And when I compare the two sides, you can see this one's just flat. There's no definition. And this one has that whole ear shape going up into it. And I also put a little bit of curvature on the ear. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on this other side. And I also started to curve some of this down in a little bit. Uh, I am going to have a neck piece that is actually going to attach directly to this. So this, I'm certain the shape of this jaw piece here and the length of this is going to get trimmed down. But for now, we won't worry about that. All right, another quick update here just to show you. I have done both sides here. So they have the same indentation going up to the ear on each side. If that makes sense, hopefully. Get into focus. Okay. And I've also put some curvature down this under part to accentuate the lower jaw. The way I want to hook the mask to the neck piece is going to be the back here is going to actually be fully attached. And I am going to leave the rest of this unattached with some Velcro to secure this to your chin. And I'm going to try to make it look like, you know, the one from Dawn of Justice that comes... The cowl comes down to the neck and then onto the shoulders, and the cape comes out underneath that with his bodysuit underneath. For this, of course, I'm just doing the head, neck, and shoulder pieces. I don't do sewing, so I won't be making a cape or anything like that. But I do have a cape that I'm planning on. Hopefully, it will fit, and we'll be able to wear it underneath this whole setup. I'm not sure if it'll fit because the cape isn't doesn't come straight off of me. It's pleated so that it ruffles, and it's pretty thick around the shoulders and the neck, so we'll see. But... 
this too, once it is glued to this, will of course pull the shape in line with this, provided that you glue it exactly to the edge here. And man, I can't wait to see this. And not quite done with the heat forming, but when I do get done with the heat forming, I'm going to go ahead and do the next part, which is sanding. And I'm not going to glue these two together. I will, of course, I think I already mentioned this, sand them separate. And to sand these, I'm going to be using a Dremel so rotary tool. I my Dremel for a little bit, and I used it to smooth out the seams in through here. And also, like on the edges, anywhere there's basically a seam. Like here, it helps to remove the excess contact cement. And it just helps to smooth it out a little bit too. I will hand sand that as well, but I used the Dremel just to do some quick initial work. And what I'm going to do next is just give you a quick example of what I do on all these seams using my Dremel. I have a, a medium grit uh, sanding wheel on it here. And it is set at a little bit past 15 as far as your speed goes. With just a few passes, it gets nice and evened out and removes all of that excess contact cement that's kind of blurbed out a little here and there and makes it look just a little bit cleaner and more even. It also makes it easier to silicone and cover, which I'm going to have to silicone and cover every single seam. I also already sanded the backside edge here, and I did go through and reinforce the facial area even more. However, you notice I didn't put much reinforcement through here, and that's because I want that to still be flexible on the sides, but I don't want the face moving or flexing or losing any definition. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and sand down all the other seams like here and all these other ones up top, like the one I just sanded, and these two on the sides. And just help clean it up a little bit with a drum before I do any hand sanding. And the hand sanding will be done once I glue this together and start doing siliconing as well. All right, I have everything sanded down, including the nose. I needed to get rid of that little crevice valley thing that was going on there that didn't look good. Now, as far as this area here, I'm not actually going to sand that at all. That gap right there, I don't need to even that out. I'm just going to fill it in with uh, some acrylic silicone. And I also did a little bit of sanding just on some of the areas that stuff wasn't quite even or flush or didn't quite match up with the other side. Like right here where the white of the eyelid meets the gray up top on this corner where the crow's feet are. I went and just sanded that down and evened that out along with some of the areas on the brow as well. All this will need to be hand sanded too to help even it out the rest of the way. But it's just a nice start with the Dremel. It saves a lot of time. And you'll notice little black marks up here. That's to show me... You know just where i'm going to line this up because next what i'm going to do is glue the face onto this and see if it will fit on my head which i mean i'm pretty the sure face it will has but been it's glued to... on with of course more contact cement and i did go through after after i heated in the cheek area to the side that i'm bonding it to gluing it together I ended up pulling some of the definition out of this but the second that i heated up the five millimeter foam and matched it to the curvature and indentation of the face here and all around it came out uh pretty pretty good i am extremely happy with this so far uh it looks pretty menacing actually much more so than i thought i was going to be able to pull off some stoked on that but a piece of advice i want to give about contact cementing this on <sighs> As I was going to glue this on, I thought to myself, because I was going to glue it on last night, but I waited. I uh, went to see the movie Black Panther. If anybody else has seen that, uh, let me know your opinion in the comments. I enjoyed it. But anyways, I thought to myself, what I need to do is apply contact cement from here down to here on both pieces and glue that together. And then just use something like a Sharpie or something to keep this side separate while the contact cement sets and glue on this piece. But what I ended up doing was not following my own strategy and advice, totally forgetting about that and just contact cementing both services entirely, which made it pretty tough for me to get this together because as I'm gluing one side, the other one is sticking. 
and I have to glue the top first because I need this to be lined up. All the rest of the mass just gets pulled up into this. And I will point out that, the, that there was a gap, but that gap needs to be there because you need to pull this up and make sure that all this stuff lines up here. So that gap needs to be pulled in. It's not a design flaw in the pattern itself, okay? It helps to pull the mask into its shape and it will help pull out the definition before you even heat it, which you need to heat it. Otherwise, it's gonna wanna pull apart the contact cement because there's just a lot of stress and strain and weight on that. One way to get around that is to not use DAP weld wood contact cement. You can always use barge, but barge is super expensive. And I love, I love this stuff and I use it on things that I sell. But for my own personal projects, I just use get it, uh, the DAP and then I just seal it with some dollar store brush on crazy, uh, crazy glue on the back after I heat it. Uh, I feel like it's always good to seal your seams with crazy glue, but you need to heat form and be happy with your project area before you use the super glue because the super glue is flammable. You put a heat gun on it after uh, applying it, you run the risk of catching it on fire, burning your project, melting your project, anything like that. So always keep that in mind when using things like that. All right, so the next thing I've done is I've gone and glued on my ears here. The little inside pieces and I did take uh, if this will focus focus okay I did take and make a pattern off this and that is of course included in with the pieces if you're looking at the pattern itself the longer side goes in the back shoulder in the front but keep in mind depending on how you heat and shape yours and what all you do there may be some variances where you may need to cut this a little larger and then trim it down to size or it may fit perfect but depending on how you heat it and what you do, there's just variables and foam and shrinking and densities of foam and how they shrink, when you heat them and how much you heat them, and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. All right, so now that I have the face glued on, I am once again going to use my Dremel to help ease this out a little bit. And I have the speed set at 15, same as before, and the medium grit head. And I'm just going to use this go ahead and help even out and get these a little bit more flush before I do my hand sanding. Of course, I'm going to run this all the way around. And I'm also going to work on the edges of the ears here as well. The ears are fairly even, but a little bit of touch-up to smooth them out I think is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all of this work with the Dremel. Okay, so effectively from this point on the mask, if you've seen my other cowbell video, and if all you want is the mask, you can, you know, sand it by hand the rest of the way. Uh, seal your edges with silicone if you wish, and then texture it, and you're pretty much done. Uh, put some Velcro to attach under your chin. But a bang, with a boom, forget about it, you're done. But what I'm going to do for this is build a shoulder and neck piece. Now, there are several ways you can go about doing this. I have a video on how to make a neck piece, and I make this specific one in it, and I show you how to make it look like it has muscles and such and an Adam's apple going through it all. And this opens up with Velcro in the back. This is the rear of it. You put it around your neck. This is in the front. And you can see from all the padding in it just how small my neck is in comparison to how this makes my neck look makes my neck look nice and beefy and if I can get this off okay and whenever I'm wearing this particular type of neck piece and the mask is on it I don't have a lot of movement this way but I can turn my head fully left and right no problem there's a little bit of side to side and a little bit of up and down but for the most part 
it hits the bottom of the mask here and I can't do a whole lot of articulated head movement, but there is more articulated head movement. I, I can say that for sure, the one I'm gonna get out of this. This is of course gonna go cover the front, the shoulders, and down the rear, which is where it splits open and attaches. And it's gonna have a neck that is going to attach to the cowl. So there isn't gonna be as much head movement. It's gonna look a lot cooler and it's going to be all you know one contained thing it's going to look very similar to not exactly like but very similar to what you see here okay cape comes out from under it comes down the neck shoulders front little tab piece there on both you can see then in the back comes down into a more or less into a v i cut mine into a slightly sharper v than this I don't like the fact that it goes flat in the back. I don't know why. I just feel like anything that goes back towards this cape or his cape itself should have the points. So, there. But anyways, yeah, so that's what, that's what I'm going to do with this. And this was a fairly simple process to make. And I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how I did it. First of all, the type of EVA foam I used is about 10 inches thick. And what I did was, first, I took a measuring tape here and with the measuring tape I measured around my neck okay once I measured around my neck I had the size of the hole I cut it out a little bit bigger because I am gonna have to put foam and stuff here and I want the neck itself to look bigger than mine and I want it to be like comfortable enough I don't want it too tight like choking me so that was the first measurement the second measurement is from the front of my neck and just to decide how far down it was. I believe it was two and a half inches or three inches. Let me check. Yeah, on me that was three inches. Okay. Then I decided how far do I want this to come down in the back from my neck. And when I got that measurement, it was about six. Yeah, about six inches. And I took my foam sheet and I laid it out flat. I figured out where the middle was in it, and I drew a line of six inches, drew my circle, drew a line straight through the center for three inches, and cut out that square piece. Then I just started heat forming it, and I cut out one side by hand, which you can see that is this one here. Then I just flipped it upside down to trace out the other side, and bam, I had my piece. Now, if you look at this when it's flat, you can see that there is a V in the cut here. Having a straight cut, whenever I went to put it together, it overlapped. So I had to cut it down into a V so that whenever this attaches together, it has the correct angle that I need, which is representative of my own shoulders. What I mean is it has, you can see the slope on the right and the left. In order to get that, I had to cut this into a V. Hopefully all that makes sense. I'm not going to have a pattern for this because as you can see and as I just explained everybody's neck size is different everybody's shoulder width is different okay and these are my measurements and that's how I came up with this I felt that it was simple enough to give an explanation and not actually do a full film through because it did take several hours of just messing around to figure this out and now that I have that though this back on my little mock mannequin shoulder thing here sorry bats didn't mean to knock you over there but you're not the most stable action figure so yeah now that that's there the next piece i'm going to start working on is i'm going to measure the distance from here to up under my chin and i'm going to cut a strip that width that gets a little bit wider towards the back i can always trim it down if it's too tall it's essentially going to look like this sitting on top of this attached to the mask now, I haven't 100% committed to or decided on how I'm going to attach it. So, before I go gluing anything to the mask and doing anything crazy, I'm going to go ahead and just figure out the actual neck piece going around here. So, next I took some 5mm EVA foam and I, I measured the distance from here to where my, my chin stops. So, it shouldn't hopefully be too tight. Even if it is, I can always trim it down. I left a ton of excess on the end here. And as I heated and worked the foam around... I just trimmed it down until it was equal on both sides and it fit. I haven't glued it in yet because I wanted to show you it prior to gluing it in, then glue it in. Part of the reason I want to show it to you is because I used my Dremel to straighten this edge out. 
in here so that when I glue it on the inside, it should be standing pretty straight up and down. I'm going to go ahead and use some of my contact cements and glue this in. All right, I have the neck piece glued in. And you can see when you look at it, it looks a little goofy. It does look a little goofy, at least I think so. And the reason why I think it looks a little goofy is because, like, you notice here, it's just so much wider here than here. And it just goes straight down like an L. Can't have that. So I am going to make some pieces that are going to go from here all the way around to the back of 5 millimeter foam. I'm going to put some more definition to and have sloped down into here. I don't mind so much that the front is straight. But the back needs more on it for sure, and especially this side, so it comes down more to the neck more smoothly. That's going to be the next thing. And you know what? I've been walking around, pacing in circles around this thing, driving myself totally crazy. Because after trying it on, it fit great, you know? And I really didn't want to attach <laughs> the head to the neck at this point. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because I have such good, you know, frame of movement with the way that it is. And when my head's straight, it lines up really good with the curves in the actual neck piece itself. So, uh, uh, after much deliberation and a trip to the gas station for Mountain Dew, I've decided that I am probably not going to permanently attach the back of the head to the back of the neck here. I'm, I just, uh, I just can't do it. Just can't do it. So I'm gonna try to make it work another way so that it looks just as good by sculpting this neck out with some foam and then sanding it all in. For my side pieces here, I figured out just exactly the shape that I wanted by just roughly trimming and cutting and trimming and cutting. And then once I had that all figured out, I heated and put the shape into it the way I wanted. Okay. Now, since I want this to look more natural and blend in like a muscle, this is five millimeter. I have cut the ed edges on a bias, but I'm going to go ahead and use a Dremel and sand these down nice and thin so that it matches up really smoothly. I won't have to do as much sanding and silicone work, hopefully. Once I got one side worked out, I simply flipped it over, traced it, and got the other side and also heated that as well. So I'm going to take these both out, Dremel them both, and start gluing them on. So checking back in here, I have got my side pieces here glued on. I'll give it some more muscular look. Uh, I'm not going to leave this edge or seam here. It's going to be both sanded and then sealed with silicone, so it'll blend in. All these lines I'm going to sand and seal in to blend in as much as possible so you don't see the different pieces. And you'll notice I left a little ledge here. That's just so the mass can fit on top of this and rotate side to side on this. At least that's the theory, quote unquote. And to test this theory, I need to be able to actually attach this to my head, and, or not head, attach this to my, my neck and shoulders. And to do that, I need Velcro. So I've been using my trusty Dremel here with the same sanding head as earlier. And I just ground in a couple of channels. As you can see here, and I've already took the liberty of gluing the sticky Velcro. Not, not the sticky, that's the dumbest thing. Uh, the loop of the hook and loop part. And this is industrial strength Velcro. It does have adhesive, but I still used contact cement to put it in and seal it around the edges with some uh, super glue. Just to make sure it stays in there real good. And for the other side, I have this piece of strapping here I'm going to glue in along this edge here and I'm going to attach the other half of the velcro to this. All right, so I've done a fair amount of stuff to the neck here since the last clip where I was gluing this part on. And these are just little I'm not quite done with this. There's a few things I'm going to glue on. And uh hold on one second here. I'm going to go ahead and remove this so it's not blocking all the light. Get a little bit better look at this. Okay, this is just, this is of course, like everything else, not screen accurate, but still looks pretty cool, or should look pretty cool. I have all these little foam pieces that I glued onto here to kind of make the neck muscles and tendons and all that good stuff that's sticking out. I didn't film it. It was a very meticulous, slow process. And I glued all of these little pieces on using super glue. And I'm going to show you how I made these little pieces, though. First, I cut out the size and shape of whatever I want out of 2 millimeter EVA craft foam. Okay, next, I take... Whoa, 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 don't drop the camera. That is expensive. I need that. I 
Okay, so next I take my heat gun. Get this piece nice and hot and pliable. Then I just bend it in half and stretch it into the shape that I want, okay? And there you can see you have a little curved piece. And then from there I just take these pieces where I want the tendons and stuff to go and I just kind of glue it on wherever I want it. And that's pretty much it for that. So the next thing I'm going to work on is I'm going to start sanding all these down because I don't want this to have a bunch of edges and lumps. I want this to be sanded and pretty flush with this. I'm going to do a lot of siliconing work to smooth all this out, okay? But I want to use as little silicone as possible because this has to separate and bend somewhat to go around my neck and actually be put onto me. And that will create a problem. If you have too much silicone gunked up sometimes, it will separate. And you're going to see like a little line in the white from it. I don't want that. So I'm hoping that by... <laughs> doing maximum sanding with minimum siliconing this should look pretty good and to sand this on some areas I'm going to use a Dremel some of the areas are just too weird for me to get a Dremel in there without like scarring and tearing up everything else so when you're going through and sanding anything it's all tight like this and using a Dremel always use your best judgment maybe even let me grab my Dremel real quick just to show you in a demonstration set this camera back down please don't fall over okay Before you actually go live with running like your Dremel and sanding this, you may want to check and make sure that you can get it at an appropriate angle to do what you're going to want to do without scoring this up. And you can just kind of test that by looking at it and see how it fits. If this bulkier part of the Dremel is going to bounce into anything and stop you from hitting the correct angle, then it's going to cause it to go off and possibly gouge up your project, which is going to cause you to have to do more repair, more sanding, more sealing, more siliconing, etc to get that done. And I also have gone and picked up a new tube of the silicone I'm going to be using, which is Alex Fast Dry. It's made by DAP. It's a fast dry acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. Okay. It says you can paint in 20 minutes. Don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> I just let it sit a good three, four hours before I even sand a layer. If it's a super thin layer, you give it an hour or two. But if it's a thick bit of silicone that you're using to cover a seam or fill in a a, a hole or a gap or anything you're going to want to give it at least four to six hours and a really really thick application you're going to want to give 24 hours if it's not fully dry and you start sanding it what's going to happen is it's going to tear that silicone right off or the wet areas of it are going to take those wet chunks right out of it and you're going to be stuck with whatever's dry it's going to look horrible and you're going to have to re-silicone it so when it comes to siliconing and things like that always be patient Okay, so to check back in real quick, show you some of the stuff I did Dremel in. Uh, I ground down this area here a little bit. I also got flush as much as I could this. I still have to go through and clean up these couple of areas here where I nicked the foam, which is that exact thing I was talking about trying to avoid, but it's really hard. I mean, Dremel's a high-speed rotary tool, and... I don't have the steadiest hands, but anyways. Also, sanded the edges, smooth this down. Now, it's a personal preference whether or not you leave this texture on here. You can always pre-sand it before even starting doing what you're doing. Or you can trim these little nubs down with a pair of scissors and then sand them smooth with a Dremel. But the thing is, uh, I actually like these on certain pieces because it gives the slightest bit less contact surface with my body which means a little bit more air can circulate through here and it'll be ultimately a little bit more cooler also heat from my body can escape a little bit easier than just having a piece that is directly plastered to my body so depending on what i'm doing i cut these off or i leave them on and this one i chose to leave them on but that's something people do ask me about pretty regularly uh, i also sanded down some of this area here to make it a little bit thinner just so this piece here that I kind of pulled out and heated will stick out a little bit more and I'm going to hand sand this whole entire thing by the way and I didn't actually show you guys the back I don't know why I didn't do that I'm sorry but yeah I did of course attach the velcro it's now able to close up pretty even I left a little bit of a gap here for adjustment and also once again dremeled and sanded and smoothed down some of these sides now of course to get all this totally smooth I'm going to have to hand sand it like I can't do that great of a job with a Dremel. I'm certain other people can. I just can't myself. And yeah, I didn't show you the back here. Very similar to like these little black pieces that I glued on the sides here. They're just bigger. And if you look at the cowl 
on the Batman vs. Superman, there's kind of like these areas here where it looks like it's bunched up, and then it just kind of goes to whatever the heck this is. I don't even know. But I put it on just because it's there, and it's something that I can put in the back. Not that anybody's going to really like see this all that much, because they're going to be looking at me in the front most likely, but they will see all sides of it, and they're going to see that too. And to have it just plain and flat with no definition or anything going on, I feel it's kind of a disservice to the fans and to myself and every every you know all the people that are going to be looking at me at a convention or wherever I happen to be. Like, well, oh, he looked, he did a good job on the front, but he just kind of stopped. You know, I don't want that kind of reaction. I want people to be, you know, like, hey, wow, you made that, you did all that, wow, you even did, you know. That whole reaction. That's the reaction I want. So put in a little extra effort. And that piece, by the way, from earlier that I was cutting and heating on here, to show you guys as an example, I ended up adding in right there. I thought it looked pretty cool. So, yeah. Next is going to be hand sanding, both on this and on the actual, like, you know, facial mask piece itself. So I've been sanding on this for several hours. I'd say about two hours, spread out over about three, four hours because I was messing around modifying a Nerf gun and had to run to the store and kids going to bed and so on and so forth. But I've been using some rough grit sandpaper and did all the stuff off camera. But the one piece of advice I could say, especially if you're using a rougher grit, this happens to actually be skateboard grip tape. And the uh, reason why I use this is it has a pretty stiff hard edge and it's not really like sandpaper like i don't think this stuff in any way is sand if you look at it in the way it sparkles it looks very metallic but you don't have to use this i like to use this it has a nice once once i get a good cut on it and get a nice straight edge it's really good for getting in like crevices and seams hard to get to places like that and get in there and get a nice sand because if you'll notice i sanded this very meticulously uh, I still have a little bit more work to do. You can probably see right in here that needs to be sanded. But I've come pretty far. And that's in the, in the several hours. Not just this one, but also this one. Okay, so the main piece of advice with rough grit or any sandpaper is to go in one direction. What I mean is all the strokes are going this way. Okay. Like whenever I come off the ear here, the flowing motion down into the face. And you can kind of see here on the face that the direction of the grit is just wrapping around the mask. Uh, part of this is to help obscure the seams, which once again I will be siliconing, but it's to help uh, obscure the seams and so you don't have some crazy, messy, splotchy, all over the place looking project. Like, depending on how much you silicone this and how much you texture it with Plastidip, because I won't just be doing a normal Plastidip coat. I'm going to be texturing this. But anyways, same thing with this. Both are going to be textured, but... You know, I wanted to have it all one uniform direction. Everything looking nice. Same thing with this. I just take the sandpaper and was just dragging it down constantly this way. When I move around here to the neck, I'm going out this way. The same thing. You can see the direction of those strokes. Once I heat this uh, with a heat gun, I'm not going to heat it too much because it'll jack up some of the, the work. But just enough to seal this outside edge that I sanded. You won't see it as much, but it is going to look more uniform. Uh, especially whenever you do it. So that's my piece of advice for hand sanding. Next, I'm going to go ahead and move on to from this extremely rough grit to some 300 grit, and then eventually down to some uh, 600 grit to help smooth this out a little bit more. And then I will move on to the right, silicone. So you can probably see here that this looks a lot smoother and cleaner. The reason why is I took my heat gun. And putting it on the high setting, if you have a dual setting, put it on the high setting. And just like that, I briefly go over it and warm the surface. I don't heat it so much that it's going to heat the foam all the way through, because if I do that, I'm going to lose some of my shape. And having to reseal the surface is, of course, part of the reason you'll notice that I went and... Uh, reinforced all this behind here because I didn't want to lose that shape and once you sand <coughs> excuse me all that preheating and sealing that you've done to get everything into shape is going to be gone because you're sanding down an entire layer of foam by of course by sanding it so you have to go through and reseal it and next what I'm going to do is uh, there's going to be so much silicone work on this. But anyways, I'm going to start using my DAP silicone to seal all of the many seams 
and joints and features and gaps like this gap here on the nose a little ledge I have there essentially I need to fill that in and smooth all that so it looks flush and I want to get all these little grooves and seams and these seams and more importantly I feel almost than anything is this neck piece all these muscles have to be like you can't see any of this gaps any of the seams I have to really fill all this in good so that it looks awesome okay for the silicone I take a caulking gun and I still had some left, so I don't have to cut this one open yet, but I got an extra one just because I have a feeling this isn't going to make it. But I just cut the tip, like it says in the instructions, and I squirt a bunch out into a Tupperware. And then, for the first round of siliconing, I definitely will use an applicator tool like this, which looks like there's some stuff on this. Huh. It's the plastic itself. Well, anyways, I use this little applicator tool. It has a brush on one end and this little flat spatula thing on the other. Now, I got this at Lowe's. It was in the section with the adhesives, like super glue, etc. So you're going to need your silicone. I recommend the applicator tool. I suppose you could just use your finger. And you're also going to need a container with some water. The water, you're going to dip your finger in and use the water to smooth out the silicone. Now, to show you some finished areas, two little spots I worked on here. You can see I filled in the gap there. There's a little bit of gap in the seam. Okay. Did the same thing up here. I'm also going to fill this in the center here, but I'm letting this area here dry first and set a little bit. And the next area I'm going to do here on camera, just to show you guys an example of what I do, is going to be this area. You can see there's a pretty wide gap right there in the seam. And I'm certain a lot of you have seen this in other videos so you can always fast forward this but yeah take a small amount and same as you would with a putty knife or if you're applying bondo or something you want to just massage it with the tool down into the gap whilst scraping off the excess if there's any little bits on there you can just kind of wipe that off then you're going to want to take your tip of your finger and dip it in your water. And then, once the finger is wet, you can kind of smooth this out here. Okay. Now, this acrylic uh, latex silicone caulk stuff is obviously acrylic, which means water based. So, as it's drying, water is evaporating, which means it's going to shrink a little bit. So don't be surprised if after the first application, you still see a dip in, 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 in your seams. Even though you have it totally flush, whenever it dries, it'll shrink up a little bit. And if you're not paying close attention, you go ahead and plastic dip it or whatever, it's going to show through. Um, it's going to show through a little bit anyways. It's hard to do this and have it perfect. Like, essentially, the slower you go and the more meticulous you are in your application of it, the better it's going to look. You can just squirt some on, spread it out with your finger, use some water, spread it out. I did that a lot in the earlier videos. But it ends up kind of leaving a lump then over your actual seam. And you really just want it all flush. And if you try to sand all that, sometimes you have a hard time sanding down the silicone. You can sand it, but it's a little tough. So it helps, in my opinion, to not put too much on to begin with. Okay, just to check back in and show you some of my progress with the siliconing so far. I haven't got really all that much done. It's been several hours of doing this, but I did get some of the front and center seams and all these other little seams here in the back as well. I've gone ahead and done. And once again, all this was done using this tool and then just smoothing it out with my finger. Now, Going over to the neck piece here, that was a whole different story. This reminds me of art class in school and doing like clay sculpting because I'm literally just globbing this stuff on and then smoothing it out as best I can. So that's pretty much that. And I'll show you here. On the back side, one side I haven't done, and the other side I have done. Like I say, this is to help kind of smooth it all out, merge it all together, so it'll hopefully look like just one piece. 
All right, so so far on this, I've put two layers of silicone, and that's all the way around on this entire piece, and I'm not done. And between this and the cowl, which I haven't even gotten to all the seams yet on the cowl, it's been about three hours of siliconing work. This is taking up a big chunk of it, just because there's so many areas and gaps that I first have to fill in. And you can see how you can you can you know notice the EVA foam is still sticking up here, like right down here where my thumb is, and over here where it is now. All those things I can go through later with a tool and clean up. But the first couple layers were just to get all the broad areas. From there, I can sand and shape and fill, etc., etc., until I'm happy with the way that it looks overall. And the mask as well. I've done a lot of it. Put in the areas on the brows. I filled in this area here. Uh, this area here, I had to use my finger. I could not use the tool, of course. Sides of the nose, the side seam, but I still have. These back seams to finish and still a lot of work, but did the ears, haven't sanded anything yet of course, that'll be next. Okay, so I am almost done with the mask, I still have the inner part of this ear here to touch up, uh, it's still a little wet, I'm working on it, but all together between these two, uh, you're looking at about 10 hours or so, 8 to 10 hours of silicone work, I'm working on it off and on all day and then late until like 3 a.m. the previous night. And I do have to wait, of course, in between applications, thinner applications, an hour or two once it's dry. Uh, you can pretty much tell it's not glossy anymore uh, on thin areas. Now, on thicker areas, like in here, where I put a whole lot of the silicone, in areas like that, you're looking at six hours until it's set enough that you can apply more and use the water again without taking away what you already put on there. And let me tell you, when you're building it up and you're not patient and you end up swiping out a big section of what you put in, you know, several hours before, it's really frustrating and backtracking. And on this piece, here in certain areas, like right up here in the front, on the other side of where my thumb is, Right in this little valley right here, I think it's three applications of silicone. But in these other areas, like here, it's six to eight. Uh, especially in these thinner areas, like where these black UVA foam pieces connected to the gray part here. It really took a lot to get that to be smooth and even and not just a lot of shape and a lot of whack. So I'm going to have to let this sit overnight, especially this one, and get it good and dry because... If you sand on this before it's fully dry, you can tear the silicone off. And to sand it on the broader areas like this, I'm going to use a sanding block, uh, 300 grit, and then I'll move on to some 600 grit, uh, just paper sheets of sandpaper to do the little detail areas and nooks and crannies and all that stuff. The face is pretty smooth. I'm going to have to do a little sanding on either side of the nose, but it really does look pretty good uh, as far as just filling in those seams a little bit. And of course, I didn't fill in any of the crow's feet on either side of the eyes because, of course, I want that definition. I did fill in the seams, of course, where the nose was, but yeah, I'm pretty happy overall with how this has turned out so far. Uh, honestly, like I said, I wouldn't put that much time and effort into a project, except that I really, really am a huge Batman fan, so I don't mind putting in the extra project for this. Sorry it takes a little longer for the video to come out, and sorry the videos themselves are longer, but I love Batman. Alright, so I've been sanding down the shoulders here with some 600 grit, somewhat fine grit sandpaper, and the sanding is good to a point. Uh, it can take out a lot of the smaller things little lines and streaks left and things perhaps from your fingerprints but bigger areas like this right here where my thumb is or there's another one here on the back side yes right in here you'll we'll notice a divot and an actual hole I'm gonna have to go through and repair that with silicone and my little applicator tool just to help smooth and even that over like I say right in here as well is gonna have to be filled in a little bit better but for the most part this is shaping up pretty good now whenever I sand on it 
one only real tip I can give is when you're doing it, it's good to go to medium pace and apply steady pressure. But don't apply too much pressure and don't go too fast. If you slip, you end up tearing a chunk out of something or just messing it up in general. And trust me, you don't want that. Okay, so much like with the neck and shoulder piece, I am done sanding on the cowl as well. But, you know, similar concept to the other. Any sort of big blurbs or issues like right in there. And see that little divot there? I have to fill that in. And where is it? Over here as well. Right there is a small area. And also right in here on the ear where I just have to fill these little spots in. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to fill those in using my silicone and tool and some water. Of course, to thin and spread it out with my finger. And next, I'm going to be doing several coats of Mod Podge that I'm going to brush on for the first uh, sealing on this. All right, so now I am applying Mod Podge to this with the brush. And I simply wet my brush and I apply it on with the same uh, direction of strokes as I did when I was sanding and smoothing out the silicone. That way everything will look uniform in one direction. You're not going to have this splotchy back and forth mishmash. It's nothing you're really going to see unless you are, for example, looking at it very closely or you're standing up closer, moving in the light. The way the light hits it, you'll see that stuff. Uh, maybe it's a little over the top. I don't know. But in any event, for this area here, I go in a rounded U shape following it. And then for all the rest... Muscles and ligaments and stuff. I'm coming down this way, fanning out, following the shape and straight strokes all the way around to the back where I'm just going simply up and down on it. Get it nice and even and spread out. I just finished this. It's still wet, but while this is drying, I can go ahead and apply it to the mask, give it about an hour, and then put on a second coat. Okay, my Mod Podge has had time to uh, dry fully and Pretty sure that it looks pretty good, but before I go ahead and start texturing it with the plastic dip, I'm going to take some flat uh, primer and I'm going to go ahead and spray this. It's going to do a couple things. One, sometimes due to the way the light hits it and different colors between the gray, the blue, and the white, I can't always see just exactly. Uh, some of the little dips and areas and things so if i primer it and put it all one flat color sometimes i'll notice a few divots or things that i still need to reseal with silicone before i go on and actually texture it so i'm going to go ahead and do a primer coat Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish spraying the whole thing, and then we'll move on to the mask. Okay, this one is looking pretty good, and much like with the other one, I went all one direction with all my brush strokes from the Mod Podge, going from the nose out, and the face back, and from the sides, curving up into the ear until it joins the curvature of the back, just to keep the texture and everything as consistent as possible. And now I'm going to go ahead and give this a primer coat, just like I did with the last one. And for this one, I ended up taking a plastic bag and a rubber glove and putting it over my hand, because I'm going to have to hold this while I spray it. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this, let it dry for 24 hours, along with the neck and shoulder piece, and then come right, back so and start I'm going to be plastidipping this to put on the final layer of texture and to get it nice and black. And I have masked off my mannequin head that it's sitting on. I also took and folded some tape over and stuck it to it, just so my piece wouldn't slide around. Because it was sliding around, and I was trying to prime it, 
and that made it pretty difficult. And since I want it to be black, I'm of course using black plastic dip. I've also used cardboard to mask off the area where I'm spraying so that I do not get plastic dip everywhere. And before I use my plastic dip, I like to make sure that it's going to work because sometimes these cans just don't spray very good and they're really blobby and kind of defective, which is pretty frustrating because it is six to seven dollars a can depending on where you get it where I live. It's not very cheap. Quick test spray. Yeah, see, it's coming out real thick. You see that? It's like leaving globby lines. Now, it doesn't so much matter for this application because what I'm doing is just kind of putting some of these, see how there's just beads on it? That's how I get the texture. I just do beaded layers, okay? I don't actually put on a solid coat. But if you're trying to put on a solid even coat and it's coming out all globby like that, you're not going to be able to at all. I don't think that it's really ever like 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 the composition of the liquid inside here so much as I just think the the actual spray nozzles are just defective. They just don't work very well. And it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. So always check your, your product and make sure that it's going to work. Okay, so that is going to be the first layer. You see it's spotty, it's just beaded up little globs. I'm going to go ahead and let dry. And I'm going to repeatedly do this, both on the shoulder piece and the mask, until I get a nice, you know, pebbly textured finish on both. And in between applications, I usually let it sit for at least an hour or two for the first two applications. If you're going to do five, six, seven applications, you need to really let it sit a good six to eight hours past the first two or three and that's all up to your own preference uh, how you like it I mean you don't have to texture it with the plastic dip you know you can just paint it from this point black or gray or whatever color you want it to be so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and do the mask and start bouncing back and forth and I'm gonna be plastic dipping both so that I get this textured finish. Like I say, for the first two, three layers, I'm gonna give about an hour of dry time, and past that, I'm gonna steadily increase the dry time. Okay, so here it is after, I wanna say about eight separate instances of me applying the plastic dip in those thin beaded layers over and over and over again. But I feel like it added a really cool texture whenever the light hits it. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go ahead and paint this also. Uh, I may actually go and paint this a flatter black. I don't know, I'm, I'm really torn. I do like the plastic dip, but I feel like it catches the light a little bit much and more than I honestly anticipated it to. I also want to point out that I did use some odorless mineral spirits to clean out the tip of the nozzle on the actual can of Plastic Dip, and after that it did come out more consistently. Uh, maybe somebody in the store had picked it up and sprayed it, put the cap back on. I don't know before I got it, but it did work much better once I cleaned it out with some odorless mineral spirits. Yeah, boy, I sure can't wait to try this on. And wow, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. All right, so this part's, of course, totally optional up to you. Uh, I've decided that I want to put some lenses on the inside of the eyes here. Now that all the coats of Plasti Dip have set. And I just cut some pieces of 2 millimeter foam that are larger than the eyes themselves 
and I super glued on some sheer uh, fabric that I'm going to glue, I'm going to super glue on the inside to cover the eyes. All right, so here is the finished cowl. Now you're going to notice that this edge over here does come out a little bit further than my actual shoulder. And that's because I am going to be wearing a muscle suit because I don't have much of those, I'm afraid. But yeah, I'm be wearing a muscle suit so that this is going to puff out at least two inches underneath the cape from where it is now once I have that in there. But yeah, I of course have no like, well, a little bit of up and down movement, but I can turn, you know, my head side to side with this, which is much better than not being able to turn it hardly at all in a latex cowl. I can actually look over this way and then look back where in latex cowls, I can't really do that. I'll try to go around here, give you a view of how it looks. I know I look ridiculous with the goatee and the handlebar mustache and the Batman mask, but when I actually do cosplay in this, I will be, of course, shaved so you can see my butt chin. Uh, for those of you out there who don't have that, I'm sorry. Maybe I should do a EVA foam chin video with latex and makeup application if you want to go as ash or something. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, this is pretty much it. And I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I like the way that it looks. I'm stoked the face came out as detailed as it was. A little worried when I started the project because I didn't do a trial run of this. I just went ahead and did it. But as always, I want to thank all you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found this entertaining and give you some idea for your projects. And the patterns for this will be up in photo format if you want to download your own and print them out on Facebook. And they'll also be up on Etsy if you want me to cut out and mail you some cardstock patterns. But yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.